is decrypting your files. All right, let's watch this video. Let's see. They're decrypting your files? How so? Actually, out that know. Microsoft's operating system slash advertising network slash global spyware tool has even greater spyware capabilities than we previously thought. You see, every single proprietary big tech cloud platform, and when I say cloud platform, I don't just mean cloud storage, but also things like email, chat apps, Microsoft Teams, and the software equivalents that their competitors have. All of these cloud platforms scan the contents of all of the files that you send through them. And of course, they scan the bodies of emails and stuff like that as well. But the point is, all plain text data that is sent through these platforms is analyzed, sometimes with the assistance of an AI that tries to identify what pictures or videos are of. CSAM, of course, is the common thing that companies say they are scanning for and fighting against. Because when you say that you're thinking of the children, a certain subset of the population that I guess doesn't really think at all will clap and cheer you on. Thank you, big government. Thank you, big tech, for caring for my children so that I don't have to. Why? Bro, that's actually, that's fully true. Like, how's it going, Zooks? That's the thing, like, a lot of the time nowadays, they'll say, you know, oh, we got to protect the kids and stuff. And 100%, yeah, we should protect the kids. But you know who should be, like, most, most, mostly focused on protecting the kids? Is the parents. Is the parents. It's their job, isn't it? It's their job. So why is it... Because <clears throat> the thing is, it's like, yeah, what he's saying with the CSAM, I believe, is, like, basically child pornography. Uh, like, CP. And, yeah, obviously, like, people shouldn't be sharing that around. Like, we should try and stop that. But if you have to implement a solution where... It also scans for every file and basically eliminates your privacy. Is it is it worth it? You know, some people, if you're very like, I guess, normie about it, you would say like, oh, well, it's just like, it's just images, it's just files. Yeah, of course. But it, it leads to dangerous like levels where it gives them the ability to spy. That's what you have to understand. It gives them the ability to fully see what's going on and, um, you know, sp spy on you. So, um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I think... It's a slippery slope. Why bother slippery slope. taking the time to be involved with your child's digital life and set- And bro, like, honestly, like, I don't know about you guys. I ain't giving my kids no iPads. I ain't giving my kids no phones until, like, they're four. Bro, I didn't have a phone until I was 14. And I, it still kind of messed me up. Parents of the kids that go on, on unchecked piss me off so much. What if you're interested in children? Potentially a preference in dating points. Bro, what are you saying? Bro, what the hell? Um, no. <laughs> okay, Ron Singh is just trolling. But, yeah, I'm letting my kids have no, like, iPads, no iPhones, no, no, none of that. The thing is, most parents nowadays are very lazy. And it's just kind of like, even like I see, like, they'll have their kids and they'll just let them, like, they're not, like, involved. They're not involved enough. I think if you're going to be, a, like, if you're going to be a parent, like, you understand that's a job. Like, you're working basically two jobs. If you've got a normal job and you're a parent, then you're working two jobs there. And, bro, it's the next generation. It's the next generation. So you can't just be like, you gotta be, you gotta be careful because everything you do influences your kids. You're basically, you're most likely like the superheroes to your kids. They're just gonna listen to you much more than they're gonna listen to anyone else, especially when they're very young. So, I don't know. It's just set up ways bro. to monitor them or just have the openness with them to talk about the kind of stuff that they see and do online so that you can guide them through life. No, just let Microsoft's AI raise your kids. What could possibly go wrong? But anyway, the new bit of spookiness is on Microsoft's cloud yeah, platform. So when you send encrypted files to someone, like password protected zip files, normally you can't see what the contents of those are. Well, if you send it through Microsoft's cloud platform, they're actually gonna try to attempt to open and scan those password protected files. Now, the way that they're doing this is actually pretty simple. 
Microsoft's already scanning all of the messages that you sent through their platforms and having an AI read it. So if you attach a password protected zip file and you say in the body of the email that the password to it is Bill Gates visited Epstein Island 36 times, well, then Microsoft already space, knows space, space, space. the password. Now, the solution to this, Wait. Well, Microsoft already knows. Did Bill get, wait, how many times did Bill Gates visit Epstein's Island? Fact checkers, oh no. Oh no, oh my god. Image 17 times, false. Flight logs only show Gates on one flight from New Jersey to Florida. Fact check. Was found dead. Oh, okay, yeah, we know this. The viral post claims. Remember, he flew to Epstein. Uh, Reuter. Who who owns Reuters? I don't know. I don't know. Who 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 is to determine? Who is to determine what is fact and who's not? Knows the password. Now, the solution sauce, to this sauce, also sauce. seems pretty simple and straightforward. Just don't tell your friend the password to the zip file in the same email that you send the file in. But okay. who is to say that Microsoft won't just harvest that password from somewhere else? Maybe from a keylog that is built directly into Microsoft Defense. You no, know, that is true. If we even assume the fact that they won't do anything that bad, they won't spy on you, they won't, you know, like, give your data to, like, I mean, no, it's guaranteed they'll give your data to more people, that, like, sell it to make ads and all that. But let's assume that they don't do that. If, let's say they're good boys. If they're if one breach, bro, it's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> all your data is just going to be stolen by someone else. So that's the thing. Like, honestly... I agree. Someone was arguing earlier about Dropbox, like, oh, Dropbox is a minimal, but he could have destroyed my argument by saying that, hey, if you use Dropbox and you're putting files that are sensitive and stuff, then just so you know, like it's, you're trusting someone else. It's, it's not, it's not the best idea. So that's a good point. You know, I could use a GitHub repo that is private and it's more secure. Even then it's not foolproof, but it's better. So that's the thing. You want to make sure you're not storing the wrong data in the wrong places. You want to make sure you're being smart. That's why if you ever get like a Bitcoin password, um, if you if you make a Bitcoin wallet, you want to make sure that you store it like in paper. That's the one thing they'll tell you is don't ever store it on a computer because if you're storing it on a computer, boom, like you're just, it's too, it's too risky. It's too risky. You want to make sure it's stored in paper somewhere safe where no one knows. Don't tell anyone. It's just, it's not a good idea. So um, base, can you enjoy it? Yeah, bro. I've been... Mental Outlaw, I'm not lying. Mental Outlaw got me into Linux. I'll tell you exactly how. Um, it was, it's probably one of his most popular videos still. Uh, it was this. I don't know. I got this recommend on my phone, I think, or my on YouTube. My thoughts on privacy. Today, Piracy. and free software. So, um, you know, you can compile. I just watched it, and I liked his content, and then I watched more and more. And then it just got me into it. And he just talked about what, Linux? What is that? And then I'm like, oh, you know what? It makes some good points. So, yeah. Fender. Anyways. You see, the problem with Microsoft is and other good? big tech companies' proprietary so cloud that, scanning quiet? platforms is that we don't know all of these specific details about how they work. We can only get some details through a sort of black box testing, like what happened to the security researchers in this article here. Andrew Brandt, who works in malware analysis, he was getting these samples of malware that have been taken from infected systems, and he then tries to reverse engineer the malware samples so he can understand how they work in order to help people better secure their systems and to mitigate the threat of future attacks, since hackers have a tendency to reuse malware with minor adjustments made here and there for several years. So very important work, work that Microsoft probably benefits a lot from so that they can further secure their operating system. Well, Microsoft SharePoint kept flagging and then deleting the malware sample. I'm gonna be quiet. Wait, let me... Is this is good? Is this good? ...samples that he was trying think, to uh, send to his off. colleagues. Yeah. Oh, um... Even though they... I got you into Rising. Nice to hear. Nice to hear, Zooks. It's actually... It's crazy to hear that. 
kind of make some impact on people. Um, I won't lie, you're a bit quiet. Yep, cheers, mate. Uh, uh, the jaw that comes with operating. Brand. Bro, Windows is just ass. I actually don't understand why. Like, okay, no, I understand why people on Windows, but it's just so bad. Like, I wish more people knew. Uh, even Linux, like, honestly, I just recommend people go on Mac. Like, Mac is just better. Like, imagine using Windows. Password protected Based zip files Mac? because Mac or SharePoint. Mac, or, you know what? It's proprietary AI defense system also scans messages for potential passwords to encrypted files that you're sending on Microsoft's cloud system. And the same thing happened in Brant's cloud storage because he was using Microsoft's OneDrive to back up password protected zip files containing more malware. So Microsoft Bro, was able to decrypt pass. them, scan them, and then delete the files well, using Windows presumably the same passwords that were extracted Let's from SharePoint or his email since OneDrive doesn't have a body or subject header where you might put a password. So what this tells oh, us shit, is once Microsoft gets a password from one of your encrypted files in any of their cloud systems endpoints, whether it's through email, whether it's through SharePoint, Teams, or anything that's under Microsoft Office 365, that password is going to be used to decrypt the files whenever they show up in Microsoft systems in the future. And because these are Microsoft systems, the scanning and decrypting of your files is not going to stop because really the files aren't yours, the system is not yours. When you agree to Microsoft's end user license agreement, you're basically signing up for a form of digital serfdom where Microsoft is the Lord that is ruling over the peasant end users. The Lord makes the big decisions about how the farm is going to change, what kind of animals are gonna be on there or whatever. Uh, Microsoft collects your data. Wait, the face one once in a while, I haven't used, I haven't, I have to use Windows for uni stuff and I have to boot it like half a day and then because it takes so Bro, I, I'm actually so happy I've never had to use it. So how's it going? New, the new, bro, what, what is your name? New GDD Hunter, new G, new, bro, new, oh, wait, is it new D, new D Hunter, new D, new D, is that Hungarian? Bro, where's that name from? It's so a Windows. Damn, I've, I'm not actually. I'm not. I'm actually surprised at the Windows, uh, Windows fans, boys. Linux all the way, man. I can't even imagine giving it a shot, even if I wanted to. Honestly, I personally use the 1809 Windows version without updating Windows Defender with zero connection to whatever Windows. So, fair enough. And they sell it just like the Lord collects the peasants' potatoes and wheat. And if one of Microsoft's peasants, bro, I'm actually like, I'm actually retarded. Nyug D, how's it going? See you, hoigwa, bro. I thought that was like Aboriginal or something. <laughs> I'm retarded. I use Windows for two programs. Yeah, it's, it, it really do be like that. Just you have to use it for them, for them pesky programs. And gets the bright idea to try to hide his potatoes inside of an encrypted container. Then Lord Microsoft's AI knights are going to show also, up. Also to explain, I did not know that's how you spell Nukti. No, I've never seen I've never seen that written. I'm I'm not I don't read that much on To delete your encrypted potatoes. So now nobody gets to eat. Clearly, mm. Microsoft Windows is not a usable operating system for this kind of cybersecurity yeah. research that Andrew Windows was one. doing, which is kind of sad because historically w Windows. Windows has been it's so called vulnerable it's, it's to called, viruses. It's called Windows for a reason. It's almost like they're overcompensating at this point with this cloud-based security that Deletes your mouth. Should you use Linux in university? It's up to, it's up to the course. Um, I'm doing computer science. So far, I've not had to use it once. I thought I had to use it for a bit, but um, it's actually fine. If you're not sure, the best thing you can do is dual boot. Dual boot on a laptop. But um, I think it's up to you. If you don't actually care about Linux, then don't use it, you know, obviously. But if you're interested in it, you understand the benefits, um, then go for it, I'd say. At least try it on a, on a virtual machine, but it's up to you. Um, also, how's it going, Kishan? How's it going? Curious Luciano, Luciano, is that Italian? Luciano, um, and of course removed all of the telemetry stuff. Depends on what you need. Yeah, again, if you're doing um, engineering, probably not. Like I think engineering requires more proprietary because they'll have you download like random programs. If I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I think you have to download random programs. And again, it, even then, it depends on what kind of engineering you do. If you do software engineering, you might not have to use it as much. But at least here in Australia, the first year is dedicated purely to 
what would you call it? It's um, it's dedicated purely to like general engineering. So you're still gonna have to use random stuff. I was wondering if you were Hungarian since I saw in a couple of your videos, but I guess you're learning it or something. Nem, in Magyar vagyok, őszintén. De csak Ausztráliába születtem, és tudod, ilyen csúnya angol akcentum van, szóval... No, I'm, I'm Hungarian. I'm Hungarian, but I'm just... Uh, who would learn Hungarian? I'm gonna be honest, like... I, I like... I lo- Imádom Magyarországot, but who would learn Hungarian? It's just... It's just too complicated. Um, just so you can speak with, like, who. <laughs> your, maybe if you got a wife. Maybe if your wife's Hungarian and you want to show off, but... You can just remember the blue... Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, so how's it going, Alan? Damn, I'm seeing a lot of people I've never seen before in the chat. Like, I, I, I read the comments, you know? I read every comment. But I've seen a lot of people I've never seen before. So how's it going, everyone? Um, type in the chat where you're from. Now we're samples from the cloud. And not to- just- we, I've had Bulgar- we've had Bulgarians. We've had some Indians. My largest audience is in America, like 17%. And then I think 5% is India and then everywhere else. Um, it's really hard. Hungarian. Level 1000 Duolingo. Just from the cloud, but also from your hard drive. Uh, so hopefully he had a cold storage backup of that Best. stuff somewhere. But luckily, there are Linux distros, like Kali Linux, that come pre- Should I make a video on Kali Linux? I was thinking about it. If you don't know, Kali Linux is like penetrator, like if you want to be like a hacker man, like you want to hack and stuff, but I don't know what to what to do. I might just show it off or something, but I feel like everyone's done that. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. If you guys uh if you guys want to see some specific video on Kai Linux, just just let me know. Pre bundle. French viewers here. Bonjour. Um, je m'appelle je m'appelle Mest. I don't know anything else. Je, uh, croissant. With a. Is there any Italians? Like a lot of Italian. useful security tools. I'm okay. actually kind of surprised that Andrew wasn't using that in the first place. Maybe he needed to use Windows for some reason. Uh, and of course, there is no cloud security on Kali Linux that's going to delete your precious files. But even if you don't do security research or malware analysis, Just you'd still be better off using a free. Just so I don't know what that means. And open source. Isn't, isn't a version of Arch Linux? For hacking, just yeah, it's actually called um Black Arch or something like that. I forgot what it's called. Black, yeah, that's what it's called. Black Arch Linux. I've never tried it. Never tried it. Um, I'm guessing. I don't know what the point of it is though. Is it? Is it even Arch? Like, is it just the Arch pa- package manager with installed packages? But like, it's not minimalist, is it? Um, is it? It kind of looks cool though. Maybe I'll do Black Arch. It looks cool. <laughs> that's just the most normy thing. Comment to to appel. Comment to appel. Ciao. 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 How's it going, Dylan Tron? Um. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do a video on this. I don't know. Black Slim ISO. I don't know. Hacker Man stuff. We'll see. I, I I was doing um I was learning a bit of like security stuff, but can't lie, security is um it's hard. It's hard to learn. It's, it's operating it's system. You just gotta like, know a whole bunch. Of, like it's just a whole bunch of stuff. There's no like, it's it's easier to learn programming than security. Like Linux Mint or Fedora for your daily computer usage, because at least then you're not going to be spied on with the free and open source operating systems. You aren't going to be bombarded with ads. And again, you don't have to worry about an AI deleting your files. So if you're tired of being a surf for Microsoft, try live booting a Linux distro on your PC. You don't have to risk losing any data when you live boot Linux onto your computer or going through any type of complicated installation process that you might mess up. No, these days installing Linux is just as easy. It's actually W, like just, just live boot. If you're not sure, all you have to do is you install the ISO, you flash onto a USB, and you want to make sure you inst- oh, Actually, I don't know. I don't think, nah, I think, yeah, that's it. Plug it into your computer and then just boot into it. Just look up how to boot into it and then try it. It's the easiest way. Easy as setting up Windows. And you basically get native performance, but you can't like, it's not like you can use it like a computer. Well, kind of, kind of. Not. When you buy a new computer from the store. So try it out today and you'll be able to experience true digital yeah, dummy.